Hello, my name is Jonathan White. I'm a fourth year medical student at Wake Forest University School of Medicine tasked with presenting a brief history of radiology. This is one of many videos in our series on high yield concepts in radiology, a resource born out of the Radiology Scholar Certificate Program. Here's the agenda for our presentation. We'll begin in 1880, when French physicist Pierre Curie discovered that when a mechanical stress is applied to certain piezoelectric materials, electric charges can be produced. This formed the basis for modern ultrasound transducers. However, it wasn't until the late 20th century that commercial handheld scanners were made available. In 1895, the German physicist Wilhelm Röntgen discovered X-rays while studying a Crookes tube, which is a device that facilitates the passage of electric current through a low-pressure gas. In his experiment, Röntgen's tube produced a glow when the electric coil was turned on, so he put an opaque box around it to see if he could separate out any types of unknown rays. He incidentally noticed a fluorescent screen made of barium platinum side on a nearby table that began to fluoresce. He placed objects of various materials in front of it and found that certain items allowed for the passage of rays, while others didn't. He also found this to be true with the structures of his hand. Though we're unsure of the exact timing, a radiograph of his wife's hand was taken soon thereafter, as seen in the top right corner. Several weeks later, he presented this to his university's Physical Medical Society and repeated a hand radiograph of a famous anatomist, Dr. Von Kolliker. The Crookes tube was inefficient and unfocused in its production of X-ray images. Several improvements leading to modern X-ray tubes allowed for advancements in imaging procedure and quality. By the early 1900s, we would create a medically helpful radiograph in just milliseconds. Notably, here you can see an American's contribution as Thomas Edison toys with what would eventually be known as fluoroscopy. In 1917, the mathematical basis for image reconstruction in CT, PET, and MR was developed by Johann Radon. Four years later, French physicist André Bocage described the basic principles of tomography, where both X-ray tube and plate move in synchrony. It wasn't until 1971, however, that the first CT was performed on a patient. With the help of Godfrey Hounsfeld and Alan Cormack, his modern computing was a necessary aid in the process. In 1938, NMR was first demonstrated by Isidore Isaac Rabi. Later on in 1945, Bloch and Purcell demonstrated the scientific principle in solid materials and water. Several decades later, Raymond Damadian discovered that tumors in normal tissue can be distinguished in vivo by NMR because of their differences in relaxation times. He was also the first to perform a full body scan of a human being in 1977 to diagnose cancer. Damadian invented an apparatus and method to use NMR safely and accurately to scan the human body, a method now well known as magnetic resonance imaging. Nuclear medicine saw several landmark discoveries in the early 20th century. Irene Curie, the eldest daughter of Pierre and Marie, discovered artificial radioactivity along with her husband Frederick. Later in the 1930s, Ernest Lawrence developed a particle accelerator called a cyclotron. His brother John used the radioactive byproducts in mice with leukemia, and in 1939, radioactive phosphorus was used to treat polycythemia vera. In 1946, radioactive iodine was successfully used in the treatment of thyroid cancer, and by the 1950s, Nuclear medicine began to advance rapidly with innovations in imaging, including positron emission tomography. In the 1970s, images could be taken of most organs in the body, including the brain. And by the 1980s, high-precision cameras could diagnose heart conditions. Now there are over 100 diagnostic and therapeutic procedures involving radioisotopes. In the 1980s, the picture archiving and communication system, as well as computed radiography, were developed. This allowed images to be converted to electronic signals and stored in computers without the use of traditional film. The transition from computed radiography where a cassette is used to convert images to an electronic signal was made obsolete and replaced with direct digital imaging where images are directly captured by electronic elements with no intermediate step. Thank you so much for taking advantage of this resource. On behalf of Wake Forest Radiology Scholar Certificate Program, I'd like to wish you much success as you explore the field of radiology.